loving, working. Living, loving, working. is KPFA or KPFB in Berkeley, KFCF in Fresno, and online kpfa.org, where today's playlist will be posted tomorrow, and this show will be archived for two weeks at kpfa.org in the music archives. It is midnight, and it is time for All Art Radio on Over the Edge.
No sports, no records you've ever heard before. It's all art, all the time. Although millions are being spent on these new art factories, audiences are allegedly in capacity in the East as in the West. Thus, showing Russia, Europe, and the world that the American tradition does set man above the animal tradition of great government. Private initiative is that. Good. Good, 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 hello, it's Happy Hazard again, all art radio once or twice again. I can't even remember if I've spoken to you before, but if I have, let's hope this show becomes remembered, too. It's all art radio. No, for instance, the other day, the other day, day, I painted a head of somebody, and the eyes, what made the sockets of the eyes, the nose, the mouth, when you analyze them, they were just forms which had nothing to do with eyes, nose, or mouth, but by the paint moving from one contour into another, it made a, a likeness of this person I was trying to paint. Oscar Tango Echo, Oscar Tango Echo. Yes, over the edge receptacle programming for the All Our Radio Show is as easy as dialing through your phone anywhere in the world. 510-848-4425. And now some brief announcements. Split Skank and Green Courtesy Phone. Split Skank and Green Courtesy Phone. Will Royal Jr., please call your office. That is all. Yes. Is anybody there? Yes. Happy Haven. Happy Haven. Good, hello. You know, John Lennon's last words were, didn't I already I think you make a good way to reply. Oh, you cut off John Lennon's last words. I, I don't know what he said. Why can't I hear you on my phone? Um, you can't? Oh, I see. Wait a minute. Now you hear me, right? Yeah, that's me. How did you do that? Uh, a, a couple of buttons right here in the studio of Over the Edge. Uh, but you did cut off John Lennon's last words from that other caller, and now I don't know what he said. Maybe this is him again. Didn't I already sign your bloody album? By the way, the Over the Edge phone number does not work if you're listening to an archive show. Duh! This is not an archive show. This is December something or other, 2010. Let's go! Almost Christmas, but we're not going to mention it. I have a what? I have a question. You have a cell phone that's cutting uh, out. I know you guys hate me for calling on the cell phone. All right, don't move. You're coming through now. What is it? There is no great and small to the soul that make it all where it comes all the are and everywhere. Sorry, you're cutting out. Dang it. Let's go! Is this all request radio? 
<laughs> yes, it is. Go ahead. Yeah, I'd like to hear some uh, pink fluid. Pink fluid? Pink fluid. Which album? Dark Side of the Moon. I uh, don't have it. Sorry. How about uh, animals? By the time you hear this archive, this is an archive. This is not an archive at this time, but it will be an archive when it's an archive. This is not an archive. Over the Edge takes no vacations. No vacations. I'm sorry, I'm calling on the telephone. Uh, I hope that gal calling up on Ray Palliaferro's next poetry night. She was awesome, except she kept cutting out. I have to cut out now. Getting gonna get sleepy. But I stopped and I thought for a moment I got something much nearer to anything I wanted. Then the next day I tried to take it further. And uh, it's a thing that goes beep and tells them to go to the phone. Oh. But we're going to use it as a microphone instead of a loudspeaker. Oh, it's actually a loudspeaker. Well, well, it does both things, you know. That's what uh, It does beep? It beeps, and it also picks up beeps, or in fact, other sounds. Ooh. It's called a beep, beep zone. Animals was the worst Led Zeppelin hey. record. Play Uma Guma. Oh, and this is an unauthorized, unsolicited plug. I was in Rasputin, San Francisco the other day. I noticed Negative Lands got their own section upstairs. <laughs> Very stupid. Really? Not in Berkeley. That's, uh, that's surprising since we haven't made anything in about 20 years. Oh, bullcrap. You just released a DVD. 10 years. Well, I wish, I wish we were releasing enough to justify our own section, but uh, I don't think we are. Can you guys clearly now? What? Can you hear me clearly now? Uh, better. Better, but uh, you seem to be tending to fade. But go ahead, go ahead. I just want number one. No, nah, you're cutting out. It's impossible. It's impossible. Uh, Cell phones. Yeah, it's... It's really ridiculous, and they're selling them to everyone. Cell phones. People just don't care about either consistency or fidelity anymore. What happened to consistency and fidelity? They're just out the window because might, you can hold it in your pocket. Might I also urge people to not switch to the cable phone that they're trying to get you to switch to? All right. Is that good advice? They drop calls almost as bad as the cell phone. They sound a little better when they're going good. This is Eric Olvik. Yep, go ahead, Jan. My main interests are hunting and fishing. From Clear Lake? Clear Lake, go ahead. I know the weatherman is long gone from this program, but I'm wondering if the technical type could explain the exact nomenclature for the cutting out of cell phones, as we just heard. Maybe you, an audio expert such as yourself or one of our listeners. I think it's just the nature of, a, of an electronic signal going through the air with not a very powerful sender. And, and, and so... And so, if your potted plant gets between you and me, uh, I don't hear you. Not any plant. Uh, 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 oh. oh my God! That's it. Here we go. All art radio. A tongue and a mind shape so close to continuous practice, but still a rabbit's life distant. Not. When a lion scent rises up, breathing the ape, loving deeply is only a moment of ceaseless hate, confusion, and grief. So P. I E Z O. Oh, and uh, a B. 
Pizzo electric disc. Please. Yes. One, please. One, please. Right. Okay. Oh. Wrapped in plastic. Wrapped in plastic. It's probably about four or five guilders. Okay. And uh, you also have to buy some shielded wire. That talking about music is like dancing about architecture. I thought you bought this already. You, yeah, I have it here. I have oh, it here, okay. but I, I just want to know for sure that I brought, brought the right thing because it's... Okay, I'm just, just checking if, if you did the obvious uh, thing for class uh, today. Yes, you have. Very good. Yeah. So uh, you've got the wire here now, and I'd like you to take the wire and to strip the end of the wire. Mm -hmm. Strip it to okay. about one half a uh, centimeter. Okay. Oh, my God. I no, cut no. it off completely. Cut it off. So uh, just try again. Sometimes it's a little hard. You see this wire has two parts to it. One part is, a, is inside of a white wire. And around the white wire is wrapped some bare metal wire. You must strip the wire so that the bare metal wire is not cut. And it takes a little practice, but I guess playing a piano does too. This can be perfect. Yes, I think you actually misunderstand, sir. Um, the quote wasn't about music at all. It was actually uh, Terry Pratchett was saying that about converting novels into stage plays or movies. Something about tap dancing, about architecture. Well, very often, sir. Do you tend to destroy the paintings early on, or do you tend to destroy them later, precisely when they've been good and you're trying to make them better? Right. Okay, let me try again now. Yeah. Good. Oh, good. Very oh, that's better, yeah. Now, take the bare metal wire and touch it to the solder and to the soldering iron. You probably wish you had three hands, but a little practice again. 
Good, okay, now what you've done is you've had the solder now go right onto the bare metal wire. Right. And now that is, is now a kind of a, a solid wire. You see? Ah, yes, right, indeed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. now, now take the white end and strip about, oh, one quarter uh, centimeter off of that. Okay. And we're going to tin that end to the same way. Okay, let me check. But that's easy. Yeah, yeah, that one's easy. You took my heart away. You took my heart home with you. You, you took my heart home with you. What? Excuse me, previous caller. My quote was actually from Frank Zappa. I don't know the guy that you quoted. And I would have called the owner to explain this, but I've just joined a new monastery, and they forbid the use of carbon granules, which, as most people know, are the active uh, ingredient in piezoelectric generators, which are the mouthpiece of most phones. And, you know, make sure when you tin the, the, the two wires that... Um, they, uh, the solder from one doesn't go on to the other. Oh, yeah, okay. Good, because we have to keep these two wires uh, separate. Separate, no? yeah. yeah. I think I tend to destroy the better paintings. Let's mix it. No was dead set on becoming an abstract expressionist painter. You at a time. You. You talk you. just like my mom. You. You, you talk that talk. You, you, you talk too much. You, you, you talk too much. You, you, you talk too much. You, you taught me to love again. You, you taught my heart you, to sing. Someone was asking earlier about the cell phone cutting out phenomenon. This is attributed mostly to echo cancellation inherent in most compression codecs. Any cell phone that hears itself will freak out and stop sending audio for as long as it can hear itself. And to bring this back into the subject, without that, you get some kind of feedback loop. And I think that more people should make songs completely based from feedback. I think it would be great. You tear me up. You. You tell them, Ivory. You. When you tin your wires, make sure you get the wire metal hot first. What you don't want is a big blob of hot water just hitting the wire and not making a good, solid connection. Now look, we've got this piezo disc and Radio Shack or Tandy, um, it, they, they uh, put them inside of, of uh, this plastic. We've got to carefully cut away this black plastic housing. Mm -hmm. And once you do that, good job. You'll see uh, you know, revealed right there. Oh. You see a, a disc. It looks like it's made out of brass. Right. And in fact, if you listen, you'll hear we are listening to a microphone made out of brass. Faces on the wall telling me to cut up your face. But I don't listen to them. You tell me. You. You tell me. You. You tell me. You. You tell me that I'm falling down. If you were to have bad phone connection, say you were playing it through a loud venue like a slaughterhouse, very loud, you're at the risk of electrifying somebody's body. <laughs> You know, this microphone instructional thing reminds me of the time the weatherman instructed us all how to rig up our phones for receptacle programming. Well, that was a long time ago. And whoever thought that Blue Reed's metal machine music would be the blueprint for a bold new future of feedback-induced music? Yes, we miss the weatherman, and I wish he would call once in a while. He can't come. He doesn't even live in this state anymore. And I'm not even telling you what state I'm in. Too risky. But he's in a different state, and uh, he never even calls the show. I don't know. I don't know. That's what's picking up this nice noise. You, you tell me why. You, 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 you tell me your dream, I'll tell you, you mine. Back of us. Oh, yeah. What we hear right now is actually thanks to the pizza disc yes yes cool. and in fact what we're hearing is a piezo disc which is soldered onto this piece of brass 
And that's just outdoors. It's a sheet of brass, mm -hmm. thin, like a, like, a, like a sheet of paper. Right, it's very, very thin brass. And on top of it, you, you soldered uh, the pizza. Uh huh. A little pizza, and, 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 and how did I connect the, the two wires to the pizza? Okay, that's, uh, you know, the next part here. We've got to take this disc. If you look at this piezo disc, you will notice that part of it is brass, and part of it is white, um, I guess, ceramic stuff. I had these de Kooning demons. I mean, everything I did looked like, tried to look like de Kooning. They've all been better to a certain extent, and I try to take them further. And then finally one day, I just said, this is nowhere, you know, it's, I wasn't, I wasn't depressed enough to be a good abstract expressionist. You, you, you the night and the music, you, you, you think I still you, care. You. I'm crazy. I had a scanner radio pulled up. You can never rely on them, though. You, you, you think you're tough. You, 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 you thought. You. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, carefully take a little knife or something like that and just scrape very gently the surface of the white ceramic. You just want to kind of rough up the uh, surface a little bit. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh -huh. And now we now take we now take our shielded wire, and we're going to take the shield part or the part that we tinned first, not the part wrapped in white, but the other part, and we're going to solder it to the brass. Now there's a very small amount of room there and you've got to do this very carefully. Mm -hmm. What you want to do is take the iron and just apply it to the brass part. Okay, good, you're doing fine. And take the solder now and let the solder gently flow onto the brass. The iron will heat the brass up and you've just put a little bit there. Just a little bit. Yeah, it goes. Good. I'm, I was, I'm really an up guy, you know. And uh, I'm just going to do something that's fun and that I like. So I did a painting of Superman. And they lose all their qualities. They lose everything. I think I could say that I tend to destroy all the better paintings. Can you never get it back no. on a canvas? No. Can you explain why? produces Look at your reflection. restful moments of intuition In the window. moments in two, three, four, five outside different rhythms Does it get darker? the analytic exploratory pulls sustain the bundle of intuitive strings. Well, my bees are gonna be here. You're gonna be here soon. Oh, my bees are gonna be here. You, 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 you,
love on you. me too strong. You. from uh, Destruction of Syntax, Imagination Without Strings, Words and Freedom by Marinetti. Such a silence I can hear myself Cop my ear My heart beats in my ear As the way I work is totally now accidental and doesn't seem to behave as it were unless it is accidental. Now, take your shielded wire mm -hmm. and reheat the brass where you have just applied that solder uh -huh. and gently touch the wire to that point and what's going to happen oh it just happened look the uh. solder turned liquid oh, yes. and kind of grab the other wire and pull the iron away and just slowly let it cool sounds like a good way to torture people drill me you, you told you. him. You, you told me. You, you, you told me, baby. How can I recreate an accident? But you might get another accident on the same canvas. One might get another accident, but it would never be quite the same because this is a thing that can only probably happen in oil paint. And my life changed. Characters he loved as a child were embraced as the latest contribution to the pop art movement. In 1961, one of his paintings landed in Time magazine. And that was the highlight of my life. This is a magazine that got seen by a lot of people. Now all of a sudden, you're, you're, not, you're known. I mean, you're a known commodity after that. Because it is so subtle that one tone, one piece of paint, one tone that moves one thing into another completely changes the implication of the image. Especially in the art world. Soon Mel's costumed lady heroes gave way to news. He paired them with familiar objects from the realm of advertising. You, you told me you care. You, you too. You.
I got interested using the brand names, uh, but only high-profile brand names. And the object also has to be an icon, something you don't even think about. When you see a Coca-Cola sign, you don't even read it anymore. You just know what it says in your mind. Early on, Mel was attacked largely by feminists because of the perception that he was treating the woman as an object of consumption. My uh, argument in defense of Mel's work all along has been that Mel is precisely critiquing a certain perception of the woman uh, uh, seen as an object of consumption. Oh, nature was wonderful, huh? Yeah, it's technique, yeah. technology, I mean. Oh. Anyway, we, so we are connected now. one part which is connected next take the white wire that we stripped mm -hmm. and we're now going to solder that to where we scraped on the white ceramic now this part's a little tricky there's a very easy thing to do here make sure the tip of your soldering iron is clean okay and you know what you can use for that is a piece of sponge from you know, the kitchen just get it wet and drag the iron over it, and you'll hear a kind of a boiling noise, like that. And uh, that has now cleaned off the tip of the iron. See? Hmm. Now, if you will, take the solder and the wire and the soldering iron, and where you scraped on the ceramic, attach the wire to it. You can have the solder flow on to the ceramic. Hmm. And as you do that, not too much. Okay, good. Me, 
evangelicals think my work probably is blasphemous. And now take your wire, which is tin, and reheat it, and watch it just melt right into the ceramic. Mm. There you go. Yeah, there it goes. Good, okay. And just pick it up in your hands, and notice that it feels solid. Yeah, yeah. indeed. Good, good job. Now we have a disc attached to a wire. So one part of the copper, one part part of the ceramic part. Uh -huh. mm. And we now have to do the other end. We've got to put a plug on this. Oh yeah, right. What what kind of a what kind of an input does your tape recorder have? Oh, it's just one of those little Walkmans, you know, walk small plug. miniature plugs. That's you know. right. So over here we take a you know min, a, that, that kind of a plug, a stereo mini, mini plug, and you're going to solder to that. Mm -hmm. Now there are so many different kinds of plugs on the market that. I suggest that you may want to get advice on this if you've never soldered. Mm -hmm. um, this is a little hard to visualize, but I'm just going to show you which part to solder to. However, in all cases, whether you use a chinch or a large phone plug or the small phone plug, the ground always goes to the larger part. The, the ground always the ground. goes to the larger part, now, I just, said the old wise man. Yes, and this is you. Remember, son? You'll learn this one. Okay. Remember that the ground is the same as the shield, or the part that was wrapped around the, the white wire. Mm -hmm. This is practically all you need to know. It's about the basics for a microphone technique. Yes, hmm? yes it is. I mean, I feel the people who say things like that about my work, and there are a lot of them. Uh, I just haven't looked close enough. That you might get something else. Uh, my work is about uplifting the human spirit. Now, why do you tend to destroy rather than to work on? That's what it's about. Why do you prefer to begin on another canvas than to work on? Mel also became known for his portraits of female celebrities. <laughs> His recent series, The Lost Paintings of 1965, is a tongue-in-cheek reinvention of these early works. Once the thing has gone over the top, because sometimes then it disappears completely, and the canvas becomes completely clogged, and there's too much paint on it, just technical things, too much paint or something of that kind, and one just can't go on. It's a technical thing. It's a technical thing. Yeah. Updated with contemporary icons. He's made a microphone now. Well, you've attached the wire, the wire to the plug. You've done a good job. And now, in fact, we will plug it in and we'll listen to it. And uh, there it is. Yeah. And why have we made a microphone here? We've attached the piezo disc to this brass piece. And uh, why does that thing work? Why do we hear noise? Golly gee, Mr. Wizard. Why does that thing make that sound? Because uh, the, the, you you, uh, you went outside and you uh -huh. hang it on the cl clothesline. Right. With uh, some clothespins. Mm -hmm. And the wind is uh, blowing and mm -hmm. uh, the, the surrounding city of Amsterdam is creating all kinds of noises. And I guess... That's been picked up by that piece of brass. Right. Uh, um, in fact, the brass is actually acting just like our eardrum. Oh, I see. Except when it blows in the wind. Our eardrum doesn't really blow in the wind. No, no, I don't, I don't, I don't hope so. Yeah, you not feel too good if it did like that. But, um, but there's a kind of a little background noise. This is this kind of steady hum. Yeah, what's that? It? That's the sound that the thing is... See, so pick... Um, I guess picking up, which is not, be, uh, um, and and that sound is where the thing is not being blown in the wind. In fact, this microphone picks up two things. It picks up the sounds in the air, and it also picks up its its own self being blown in the wind and being moved by the environment. <laughs> is the Universal Media Network. One, two, 
three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Dumb. I'm the weatherman, and this is Over the Edge. This is All Art Radio, dedicated exclusively to the crucial needs of artists only. Result of widespread long-term development. Mm. It's been raining all day. It'd be kind of nice to rain now, because it would pick up the sound of the raindrops on it too. And what happens if you stand in front of the metal sheet and you start shouting? Well, it would actually pick up the sound of your voice. And what would be interesting is that your voice would actually be kind of flavored by the sonic flavor of that particular sheet of brass. Oh. And each sheet of brass would have its own flavor, a little bit like taking a color photo and uh, putting a slightly rose-colored filter in front of it or a slightly yellowish one. My whole life has always been who I happened to have a crush on at the time uh, in the movies. Yes, indeed. All art. And that's a good all-inclusive term. Alas, alas, alack. Independent yes. film was once considered an art form, and it may it's still be. However, a place. And IFC, that cable channel, has mm -hmm. decided that films do, need not be place. given any respect. And they oh. now put commercials on their films. So I've been conducting a war against them on Facebook and uh, trying to get people to write letters. However, it's a lost mm -hmm. cause because television, in blue. television is terrible. Instead of the red plate, as what ran out of time, dealing places, beach tiger, a lion on the beach, hey Einstein, Einstein, yo, get off the beach. I hated that piece of music. I saw Philip Glass live, and they played that, and it made me glad I didn't buy the album. The same piercing note, again and again, assaulting the audience. Well, it would have been great to go there to be tortured invite. if you had a hangover. Blink your eyes according to the strobe. And then, um, you know, you've painted some of my images for this star show, and this was fun painting your image, but it was really hard for me to get into it because it wasn't my image. No, it was my image. So I have to hand it off to her. Oh, a, com a uh, composite work, huh? I've got paintings where you do a painting, you, you, you do some strokes for a little while, then you hand it off to another artist, and uh, sort of like those stories where people write a, uh, a paragraph and then hand it off to another author and see what the story turns into. No. Going ahead and taking what I have and offer. Oh, yeah, I could do that. And uh, it was really something to work in here. First of all, I like to go with the face first. That's always very critical in my work. If the face doesn't work, then nothing works. The first layer is just generally to get the color all set, what you think is going to be the color. And then I went over the whole thing again yesterday with a dry brush. Very stiff paint and scumbling, as it's called. What do you do with yourself? What kind of life have you had? You seem fit, a bit grumpy. You can smile, surely, at something.
very dry. And depending upon how much pressure you put on it, you can alter the value of it from dark to light. Yes. Poetry happens to be an art. And artists happen to be human beings. An artist doesn't live in some geographical abstraction superimposed on a part of this beautiful earth by the non-imagination of unanimals and dedicated to the proposition that massacre is a social virtue because murder is an individual vice. So you have no other way of experiencing anything. Nor does an artist live in some soi-disant world. Nor does he live in some so-called universe. Nor does he live in any number of worlds or in any number of universes. Except through the help of that moment of knowledge. So the individuals do not exist at all. To experience your existence as a physical entity is possible only through the help of that knowledge. Otherwise you have no way of experiencing yourself, the body, what you call your body. You, you see, you have no way of experiencing that. As for a few trifling delusions, like the past and present and future of, quote, mankind, unquote, they may be big enough for a couple of billion super-mechanized sub-morons, but they're much too small for one human you have no way of finding out whether you are alive or dead. Except through the help of that it is for you to make your own microphones. So there is nothing which you can call your own. Hmm? All your experiences belong to that. All your thoughts belong to that. All your feelings belong to that. So what is it that you can call your own? Hmm? You simply find a material that you like you can go to your local candy store and buy a piezoelectric disc and gently take it out of the plastic. They wrap it in plastic. They wrap everything in plastic and solder to it. What? I, I, I'd like you to take the soldering iron in your hand if you're right handed please put it in your right hand okay and now take the solder it's over there on the left and take a small piece of solder now you strip the wires haven't you uh, oh, okay okay I, I stripped, uh, stripped, stripped the wires yes. yes you've got them both stripped now look there are two parts to that wire. What, what did I buy at the uh, Tendi store now? Uh, you bought a piezoelectric disc. A piezoelectric disc. Yes. It's the kind of a thing that you usually find inside of a doctor's beeper.
Every artist, strictly illimitable country, is himself. An artist who plays that country false has committed suicide. or in this case, each uh, material lends its own flavor to what's going on. Not blown out like a candle. Not collapsed by indifference. But they stand on the same feet. Gasho to all sutras. Gasho to daydream cartoons of monkey mind. almost nodded off and then I heard the word suicide and it jerked me awake. Nothing. I don't have any thoughts of my own. Hmm? Not one thought. They belong to us all. We use them to function in this world sanely and intimately. That's how they are functional in their value. They have no other value. So we have to use that knowledge to experience things. Including the existence of your body. This is my body. buildings is there not there KPFA 94.1 Berkeley APFB 89.3 Berkeley KFCF 88.1 Fresno online kpfa.org this is all art radio on over the edge and that covers it thank you hope so there they are not there welcome to your chaos welcome light of the roar Calm light of the roar. The sound of a feather falling in some paradise. Paradise nearby. Roar light in ordinary blackness. Transparent blackness zings out and in. Sculptured hands of a seated figure, half closed eyes, rain as disturbance and straw, and grandpa's tin snuff box.
so. I would like that. You want to go do, uh, to try that out? Yeah. You want to sing in a metal brass uh, microphone? I would. It doesn't look like a microphone you see on television. Why happens if I open the door? I don't know. What's, what's But you open the door? You just put on a, like a coat because it's very cold outside. Yeah, yeah. And, and, uh, and, and shout and, and I will listen if I hear anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ah, okay. oh, Cora is getting up actually. She has been eyeing this microphone for quite some time already. It's hanging there gently on this closed line, being pushed forward and backwards by the wind, mm -hmm. creating the sound we are hearing right now. You can hear the door opening. The door is going to be opening now. We can see through the window that she's in front of... While you sit here, I'm going to actually go make that a little louder, okay? Outside. Yeah, really. So it's a little bit like a piece of paper, actually, like a big sheet of paper hanging there. Uh huh. It's like you could make actually a microphone out of a piece of paper. Exactly. You, you're reading your paper and you're singing, and it sounds uh, in the other room. Uh, right, you can do that. It's great too. for singers. I mean, you don't have to really. You just read your paper, and while you have to sing, you just sing and go on reading your paper. Well, in fact, it's very efficient if you think it over. Uh, not only can you have the music be on the paper, but you can have the microphone be there too. Yeah, right. It just saves, uh, just saves safe. carrying certain things around. Yeah. This is a body. This is my body, and so on and so forth. I mean, this area here, for example, was too dark. It's a blonde, after all. And she sure looks like Scarlett Johansson, doesn't she? <laughs> I'm having shows everywhere. I have waiting lists for my work. Auction prices are going through the roof. And even a good lawyer cannot kill the dead. There is no such thing as an individual at all. But a human being who's true to himself, whoever himself may be, is immortal. 
And all the atomic bombs of all the anti-artists in space-time will never civilize immortality. But the culture at the same time has introduced this element of becoming individual. So that has turned us on into neurotics, wanting two things at the same time. There are no individuals and at the same time it emphasizes the need to become individuals. So it turned us all into neurotic individuals because we want two things at the same time. And that's the situation we find ourselves in. So what is it that you can call it? In other words, you have no freedom of action at all. I've always enjoyed fear. It all starts, I think, when the child is three months old, little tiny baby in his mother's arms, and the mother says, boo. It gives the poor child the hiccups. Then eventually the child recovers from the shock and then smiles. A mother smiles. That's the first taste of fear ever given a child. Later on it gets on the swing, swings higher and higher, nearly goes over the top. Then eventually pays money to go on the switchback railway. Screams as it goes down the first dip. And then they pay money to go in the haunted house. Now why do people want to pay money to be scared? I don't know, it's a strange uh, phenomenon. The audiences are, are, are really strange. They love to dip their toe into this cold water of fear. No light. No strong. Even Tada fails. The sutra rests on a lotus. One hand swings the sword. Flame edges are blades. Chopping out walls, freeing the realm. Serious is comedy. Cartoons of no heaven. Fantastic. Uh-huh. Oh, so it does have its uh, flexibility. I uh, never ever expected to get past a million bucks for one of my paintings, but it happened in England last, last year. I enjoy my work now more than ever because... Um, I can see progress. People have said, uh, oh, things that are horrific on the screen are a bad influence. They're not really. I think they're probably a bad influence on sick minds, but not the healthy mind who likes to enjoy a little scare. How do you summarize the essential ingredients of a suspense film. What do you always look for? What do you try to do? Well, one often hears uh, uh, one being referred to a maker of mystery thrillers. This isn't true. I never make mystery films. Very simple reason. A mystery is something that the public are trying to discover. And it's an intellectual process. And I've only made one who done it. It was a film called Murder. Herbert Marshall was the leading man, and that was really a whodunit uh, in terms of looking and searching, seeking out a murderer. So there's no emotion in a whodunit because you withhold information from an audience. Mm. The element of suspense is giving them information. Now, I made a movie once, and there was a lot, lot of talk about it, a film called Vertigo. The story of Vertigo, of course, is the contrived murder. Stewart plays a uh, sort of detective who's supposed to watch over a girl whose tendency might be to suicide. And, of course, she does commit suicide, but what he doesn't realize is that it's a fake suicide. Another woman is thrown over, and he is in love with this woman and can't get over her death. 
And he meets another brunette girl and sees the resemblance and tries to make her over in the image of the dead woman, which he eventually does. And the startling climax is the fact that it's one and the same woman. Now, I changed that. The moment he met the brunette girl and saw a resemblance, fell in love all over again, I said to the writer, the uh, uh, famous playwright Samuel Taylor, I said, Sam, we're going to blow the whole thing now. He's merely met a brunette who resembles the dead woman. I'm going to try and make her over. If he tell the audience now that one and one girl get them in a different state of they're going to say, and what action has he been in the audience has said? Next thing you've given them, why does the girl rest it? Now, if you hadn't told them it was the same girl, they said, well, what's the matter? Why does it matter? Why does it matter? Why does it matter? What's the 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 matter? Well, well. Another word that I barely heard from walking across the room that brought my attention. Maybe it was subliminal. You know, there are two great leaders, not otherwise known for their warm and fuzzy nature, who were actually real friends to artists. One of these was Nero. Nero actually encouraged artists and uh, was a real patron of the arts. And the other was Joseph Stalin, who backed socialist realism, which uh, revived the skills of realistic portrayal for a generation of Soviet artists. Radio. Yep, 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 Truly. Rojas coming inside. And there's this other sound which is now kind of entering here. And this is also recorded with a piece of metal sheet. Well, in this case, this tape was made. Um, in St. John's, uh, Newfoundland, which is in Canada, the northeastern part of C Canada. And, uh, you're hearing two wind harps. And St. John's is a cold, windy place. And, uh, we don't have the wind here today, but we have the cold. And uh, wind harps are made out of piso discs and string, different kinds of string, thread, string, ribbons, metal strips, all kinds of things can be amplified, motion picture film, videotape, paper strips that you cut out, everything can be a microphone. So still one piece goes to the piso disc uh -huh. and the other piece goes to the videotape. It goes to the videotape or the audio tape. Can you solder on videotape? Uh, well, what you do, you don't solder on the videotape. You have to use some kind of tape like double stick mm -hmm. or something like uh, super glue. Works very well on videotape. Oh, yeah, right. And, um, I mean, anything. You know, you could tie it on with a, with, a, with a piece of thread, and that would give a different sound, too. Right. But it's just the obviousness that everything uh, vibrates. got 40 years of work to look back on, and I can see progress. There are people who say, you know, that the early work in the 60s was your best work. But that's all about nostalgia also. That's just what they think. My best work is yet to come, is my answer to that. I mean, I have to believe that, you know. Otherwise, what's the point of coming down here? Why doesn't you want to be a blonde? But if you tell them the truth, you know why she wants to resist it. And you add an extra dimension to the character. So there's the difference. And it's the same with the analogy of the bomb. You and I are sitting here. Suddenly a bomb goes up. we go, blown to smithereens. What have the audience had watching this scene? 
five or ten seconds of shock. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Huh? Exactly. marked by experimentation. Sculptors were working with materials new to art making, borrowed from the aerospace and automobile industries. It was so much fun to go back over a piece that I did in the 60s. I mean, was just... I made a lot of pieces of sculpture out of plastic. Uh, a lot of these are like painting with light, really. I was really trying to entertain myself, and I got into these little mechanical things, I was buying motors from the local liquor store where they would have these wigwag things, you know, you see it. Sam Richardson, Harry Powers, and Fletcher Benson they were all teaching at San Jose State and they were all experimenting with plastic materials. And when they all talk about that period, they talk about it as a really unique and special time. It was a time when we all kind of shared information because it wasn't any galleries, so it didn't matter, you know? I mean, there wasn't any competition. <laughs> it was just kind of like <laughs> we were doing this stuff. And um, then all of a sudden, everything started happening. In the 1960s, some of these homegrown California artists were catapulted into the national and international art world scene. You're tuned to All Art Radio. Where does the beginning or end? Tied up in string and star clips? Stan Brackage film projected on the skin of a tadpole. More often, wisdom disguised as compassion, roaring in the four corners. The center is unutterably calm and does not seem so. Under the monkey mind, the roar of the Dharma flashes. My light is black. My beret is black. My apartment is black. My girlfriend is, well, she's very fat. Oh, fat, make the train yard of apocalyptic America. Hissing and groaning like a horse on fire with a wick like gravy and evidence of my song. <laughs> Greasing the abnormal spirit of anti arborist desire, dropping dollop, dreamlike cornucopia, until nightfall of consciousness and somnolence, till the schoolboys know. The carnival barkers know. And the legions of lowing lettuce pickers know. And all goes in and out of the nose know that roaches are building a motel for us. <laughs> America! 
Yeah. You're an unfriendly waitress with bad cappuccino. I'm in pain. He said. I said, I know what you mean. No, he said, I'm in pain. I said, I know what you mean. He said, no, man, you're standing on my foot. Come with me now, for I feel the tiny piece of time on my tremorous testicles like two twin tin types of... I hate it when I get stuck on speed. Those are frogs and also insects. Scene. You and I are talking about football, something very innocuous. But we tell the audience there's a bomb underneath this table and it's going to go off in five minutes. Now, this innocuous conversation about football becomes very potent. They say, don't talk about football, there's a bomb under there. That's what they want to tell us. And finally, as the clock ticks away and we keep telling the audience they've got one, one minute to go, half a minute, quarter of a minute, that is when it must not go off. If we let it go off, that audience will be mad as hell at us. They'll be disgusted. I said, don't go and see that movie. Your toe must touch the bomb at the last minute. You look under, you grab it and throw it out of the window. Then it can go off. But you and I must be safe. That audience need that relief after you put them through the ringer. For me, the work is, is the meeting place of the intellect and the, um, and the body. It's, a, it's, a, it's absolutely complementary. It's no good just having a good idea. It's also necessary for me to, to, to make it and to carry it out. And, and not have somebody else make it for me to do it myself. Because my work is very personal. It's oh. Is it a tongue? There are no other distinguishable human features. Over the cheek area of this grotesque creature, if it is a creature, the blue pocket watch is draped. The minute hand is at 12 o'clock. The picture hanging on this wall is painted on a very large, wide canvas. If you stand in the middle, it seems to expand indefinitely on either side of you. A loaf of bread, a container of milk, and a stick of butter. The bones? A whole pond. How did you do that? Well, I put a wind harp across it. I put a piece of brass, a large brass microphone, right into the water and hung it from the wind harp. I made some microphones out of actually some egg cups that I got in Holland. And uh, egg cups with those kind of rounded end have a wonderful large pickup surface. And that's where all the high sounds are coming from. I simply took the piece, uh, you know, the piezo disc and just glued it right to the egg cup. And there's another sound going on there, uh, which is a window screen. Brass, and I made a large screen which I wrapped around a camping uh, light. 
and that attracted the moths at nighttime. So this is a nighttime tape. You can hear insects buzzing. You can also hear them crashing and scream. They're friends when you get to the light. Responsible, receptive, reusable. This is the Universal Media Network. You found the sound of found sound. The Filthy Rich Foundation brings you all art radio. Comic voices from childhood in a rainstorm. Each second of illusion laps out clouds of baby praying mantises hopping like elves over each other and clamoring, fighting with new hunger. Innocent as raindrops. It is all ordinary as starlight sparkling on ivory and paint catching fire. Eat your art. It's tasty. I think after you uh, um, find a lot of, of, of these discs and begin to uh, solder to them, you can make all kinds of microphones. And uh, I find that I'm always, um, I mean, it's completely astonished by the things that I find and that the things that other pe people do. Fletcher Benton, who has lived and worked in the Bay Area for over 50 years, garnered attention for his colorful kinetic sculptures. Peter Sells, who really set my career off, he came to the Museum of Modern Art, came out to Berkeley, he was a major curator, and put together the most important kinetic show ever put together, it included me in this show. That set my career off, and within a month I was getting calls from all over the world. I had galleries all over the world just like that. The 60s was the golden age of kinetic sculpture, or art that moved. Fletcher was one of a handful of artists in America pioneering this new art form. It's an abstract work without any hint of representation. Its colors are somber, black, blue, gray, brown, and white on an off-white background. It's painted in Jackson Pollock's famous drip technique. And there's no better way of describing the way it looks than to explain the way it was painted. Pollock laid the canvas flat on the floor. Then he walked around with a can of paint, using first one color and then another, pouring and dripping paint all over the canvas. He would not pour the paint directly from the can. Rather, he dripped it from brushes or from sticks used for mixing house paint. As he walked, he would fling his arms in sweeping gestures, so the paint trails in long, blobby ropes across the canvas. Some are straight, some curved, and they vary in length. He was able to control where the paint would be thick and where it would form fine, thin lines. He carried on until he had covered the canvas with a deep, dense web of trailing ropes of paint. The bare, off-white surface of the canvas is visible in many places, particularly around the edges and corners of this unframed painting. One can imagine the experience of running one's hands over its knobbly surface and following the trails of paint with one's fingertips.
yesterday, some, um, on I guess at a workshop I, I was offering, somebody made a wind harp that they put on top of their car. Mm. And uh, ah. as they drove around the town of Eindhoven, uh, as they went faster and slower, the wind harp pitch rose and fell, and you could hear the sounds of the cars passing and stuff like that. What uh, what was made of the wind harp? Uh, they simply took a uh, coat hanger and bent it and put some thread across it, and just and just put it on top of the car, and. Uh, kind of a nice idea that instead of riding your car and having to listen to the radio, although admittedly this show is going out on radio, you could now listen to your own wind harp. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. I didn't even know what kinetic art was. here with you. It's all art radio. It's KPFA in Berkeley. And that can't be right. That just can't be right. I'm going to switch CD players so often necessary here at KPFA now that everything is in decrepit decay. And every week you come in, it's a little bit worse. Machines not working, glitching, skipping, denying your CD. Just player after player going down slow, the whole place. Why? Because we can't just go out and buy some new equipment. Why? Because we just don't have the money. Because we're listener-sponsored radio, and that never works, as everyone knows. History proves it. We've only been here 64 years or something like that. I don't know. But that can't be right. No, that can't be right. I'm going to switch players. Ah, yes. A good hello. Happy half. You're cutting out again. Don't hang up. I'm not hanging up, but you're cutting out. It's, no one. It's very annoying to try to run an all art show, particularly when the quality is so bad. No one has landlines for it. Uh, every other word is being missed. It doesn't work. Don't you have a landline? Where are you? You've got to be home at this time of night. I said no. I I couldn't even make out that. Oh, about now. No, nope, not working. What about now? I heard. What about now? Try another sentence. There are not. Nope. You're cutting out. You're cutting out. All right. Let's figure this out. Move around your house. Where are you? I'm trying to signal. Where are you? I'm in. I it cut out. I didn't hear where you are. I'm at. I can't. It's cutting out. Uh, but move around. Walk to the bathroom. Walk to the bedroom. Walk to the cellar. Walk to the attic. Let's find a place where you work. What about now? 
What about now? Go ahead. Any? No, it's no good. Don't you have a listen? Give me a one-word answer because the first word usually comes through. Do you have a landline? No. No. Well, then you're you're doomed. You're doomed. I can't keep you on ever. It's too bad. It sounds awful. I can't do it. I just can't do it. I'm sorry. You sound like a nice person, but but you have a cell phone. I know many people land. <laughs> All right. It's it, it's not going to work. Okay. Good night, and don't bother calling again. Jeez. I like again, the they used a little pizza disc. Huh? Yeah, that was it. Yeah. Oh, those pizza oh. discs. So it's very cheap to make those microphones. It is very cheap. Now, I think that if people looked around, you could probably find these things on the uh, surplus market. Who's the radio station coming in here? Yeah, sounds like a loud and clear radio station oh. being picked up. Yes, you're fine. Uh, you're making yourself yeah. you're making yourself intentionally unintelligible, but that's okay. What? Yeah, well, um, this is a, one other thing is going down like that. Uh, this is just uh, the way to uh, to keep going into the into the phone, yeah, and. Uh, Just give me some art. Okay. Did you say okay or fuck it? No, no, I said okay. Okay. And I'm in Eugene, Oregon. Yes, I lived there for a year. It's a pretty town. It doesn't have a lot of substance. Can you hear, hear me? Yes, I can. I, I wish you would, uh, I don't know, do something interesting? Yes, I will. All right, go ahead. I'm, I'm on a cell phone. <laughs> but... Well, yours is working a whole state away. <laughs> I'm sorry to say it. I have. I'm so poor that I have to listen to you on my telephone landline modem. Good God, I'm hearing myself now. Um, you know, I sent money for two memberships in the last five months, and I'm surprised, but not totally, that there isn't a new CD player. Well, no, you're you're one of the many, but it takes many, 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 many. I know. And the sad thing about it is, it's not just listener-sponsored radio. I think there are stealth bombers in the Pacifica Company in New York. Um, that particular item uh, keeps on coming back where it's like the morning news show is that okay yes well i i i hardly know what's going on here i never come by the station except to do the show i i'm that, i'm so actually pleased that, that i got to ha uh, talk to you well that way i remain safe <laughs> that's good to hear 
Yeah, but but we are going through all kinds of behind the scenes turmoil here with people being fired because of budget budget and and the, our whole morning show, our whole originating morning show from here is gone. I know. Now we have to listen to L.A. in the morning. That's very peculiar. And, I've and it's complained. All, it's, it's all I've because, complained. Uh, it doesn't, and it, um, it doesn't do any good matter, for people. It seems like. doesn't seems do like any good. A, doesn't, a Manchurian doesn't do any candidate good. Doesn't do any, in uh, Pacifica. Doesn't do any good to complain because what we need is money, not complaints. For gosh no, sakes. I mean, but I mean, as much money as I can living on disability. But thank you. I have one other question for I you. Thank, I thank everyone who's done something, but I, I, I condemn all the rest of you who've never supported listener-sponsored radio. To, I steal it. To condemn you to an art without life. I mean a life without art. But they steal it, too. I mean, they're stealing the radio. I know there's people who listen. There's probably 90% who don't support the station. Probably. But, um, and I, I, I put people on to the radio uh, through this, this uh, modem connection I have and tell them to send money. I do it daily whenever I tell somebody about this radio program. Thank you. Thank There's you. not much uh, going on otherwise in the radio land. No, no, there isn't. Few and far between. There isn't anything like this. Not that. That's correct. Absolutely correct. Yes. So um, if you're I, here, I if you're if you're if you're then, here, wait a minute. If you're here listening to this every week, like I know a whole bunch of you people who don't pay are, just think about it. When it goes away, it's, it's not gone, come back. and it's, it's not gone. coming back. And it's, it's gone. It's really gone when it's gone. And um, I'm going to um, keep on sending, you know. It's, it's pathetic. I, Thank $25 you. $25 every like, three, five months, something like that. Oh, you're way better than most. Perhaps by a microphone, I don't know. Well, sometimes they do pick up radio stations. And I'm never quite sure what to do at that point. If it picks up a radio station, and I didn't mean for the radio station to be there, does that mean I should turn it off? No, it's not. Well, I, guess, I guess it's there. I mean, it's, no, it's in the... It's the environment. Legal. Sure. So, it's a nice. I don't know if it's legal or not, but oh uh. well. I guess I don't have to worry about that, do I? <laughs> no, please. <laughs> All right, I've changed the CD player. Let's see what this sounds like. Holy gosh, Rudy, it's the same. They actually made it this way. <laughs> they actually made it this way. Oh, my gosh. Listen to this. Well, that CD player it's in, which we're assuming is playing correctly, but may not be. It's had its problems. Uh, can only play one track at a time because I can't figure out how to make continuous play on it. Not obvious. No one's told me. And I want to play several tracks from this record so that I can go out back and have a smoke. That's right, a smoke. So I'm going to change it again to another player, and this will absolutely make sure whether they made it that way or it's us. Hang on, everybody. All right. Let it load up. Takes forever. There you go. I think today 
I think today we will play track four, five, and six. All right. Let's see if they made it that way. Yep, they sure did. <laughs> Can you beat that? Not on commercial radio, you can't.
This is All Art Radio. That's Poptastic on the Sealand label. Huh. And this is KPFA in KPFB in Berkeley, KFCF in Fresno, KPFA.org online, where it's easiest of all to contribute to this listener-sponsored radio station. things move, but I didn't know I was involved in something that other people were trying to explore as well. I was up every morning, working all day, seven days a week, to try to catch up with my enthusiasm and excitement. No sound pleasing. Uh, this tape, this is... Ah, oh, I just heard a great bird sound. This was made from two microphones, one made out of a long strip of paper made by my very good friend Allison Devine. And uh, this is a kind of a series of dyed paper pieces, and I've turned them into microphones. There's another microphone there, though, which is made, which in fact is part of um, my first attempt at, um, I guess, computer music. This is an amplified floppy disk. And uh, you just uh, take a floppy disk and you uh, solder a piece of uh, pizza uh, against it, and there you go. Exactly. You don't solder because it, it would melt, but you just use the tape again. Yeah. And it has a wonderful, crisp quality to it. And yeah. you also hear a pond in the background. This stuff is blowing in the wind in um, Guilford, Vermont. And um, as the wind blew and stopped, the pieces would be dragged over a pond and then go away. And now they're over the pond, and that's why you can hear the running water in the background. Yeah. I wanted to play a little bit more of this other tape from St. John's, Newfoundland. This is a wind harp again. But it's a wind harp in a kind of a rain, a nice gentle rain. Uh, here's a night. When you make a wind 
mind part. You actually have to make a hole in the disc. You do a small drill. And if you don't have a small drill, you can take a hammer and nail and just kind of punch a hole in it. In the late 1950s, Fletcher Benton had moved from a small town in Ohio to San Francisco. He landed in Bohemian North Beach. He was a sign painter by day and an artist by night. I was trying to find myself as a painter, and you know, you're up against Devon Korn, Bishaw, Joan Brown, and on and on, and that's a heavy wall to break through, and I just, you know, I was doing good work, and but it, which it just simply didn't ring the bell. Out of frustration, Fletcher threw out his paints and quit making... And I knew I was going to be sitting around in hospital for long periods of time, um, so I started to knit, and um, everything's kind of like stemmed from there. So. But this whole business of graffiti knitting, yeah. um, that has its origins in the United States? Um, it does, yeah. I think um, there's a group in Dallas um, called Knitter Please, uh, Magda Sayeg, she kind of started something. But I think people have been doing it all over the place for a while. It's just starting to kind of come out of the woodwork. And I spoke about those knitted creatures adorning London yes. Bridge. That was your work. That was it? us. That was um, Knit the City. So it's um, me and um, three other uh, graffiti knitters, the Fastener, Shaun of the Dead and Lady Loop. <laughs> And, um, <laughs> yeah, we uh, do little kind of installations um, around London so far, but we, we're hoping to kind of go off into the world. And you just pop them up and then, what, come back another day and uh, take them just, away? We again. just walk away, really. You know, uh, people steal them, actually. This is All Art Radio. Because they're so cute. Um, so, yeah, we get lots of uh, thefts, but we leave labels on them that say confess, confess your theft at knitthecity.com and then people kind of get in touch with us and say, I stole your sheep. Um, a lot of time, we never know. Um, the bottom line is you just want to put a smile on people's faces. Isn't Pretty it? much, yeah. But um, we tell kind of stories with um, some of our installations. So we did like Oranges and Lemons. We did the six churches in London that are in the nursery rhymes. So we've got like a little bit of a message behind our, um, our graffiti nicks as well. And you also made the four famous famous lines in Trafalgar Square that look a little yeah. bit different. Yeah, ones. that was uh, less of a... It started as an idea to kind of sneak up and do it. Um, but because it was a celebration of me um, being well for my cancer and um, being told I was in remission, um, Cancer Research kind of picked up on it and it became quite official. But knitting is a pastime. On the rise? On the decline? Definitely. Um, I run a knitting group which started off as three people, um, Stitch London, and it's now... Uh, we have 8,000 members. Um, so it's definitely on the rise. There's a lot of knitters out there. Uh, women and men? And Yeah, men. There are men as well. Yeah, uh, Quite a few men who come along, actually, um, considering there's a group of, uh, large group of ladies sitting there crafting. It's a good idea for a man to come along. I'll tell you what I can do. So the handprints in the gallery are my hands and the stones that I turn up on the mountainside of the stones that I can physically handle myself at that, at that place. My work is absolutely um, a portrait of myself in the world and the materials that I find that. I do the things that actually have profound meaning for me. Weird-looking outfit, look kind of thing that you would expect an artist to wear. Out of frustration, Fletcher threw out his paints and quit making art. But he quickly found himself back in the studio, experimenting with shiny sculptures made out of metal and plastic. So I thought, you know, I'm going to take some of the geometry of the letter forms, simple things like a square to a circle or a target to an S, and have them change with these little motors. And that started it. 
Fletcher has come a long way since his days living as a struggling artist in North Beach. In the 1980s, he built this three-story, 15,000-square-foot studio in San Francisco's Soma District. It sounds and smells like one of the auto body shops in the nearby alley, with metal grinding and sparks flying. He employs three assistants that help him build the large-scale sculptures he now makes. Works for private and public commissions, as well as collectors and museums. And they build most of them right here. In this country, we didn't have a big network of carvers and foundry people here, as they did in Europe, because they've been, you know, carving since uh, Athens. And uh, so we didn't have that tradition. And the artist just had to damn well figure out how to do it. Fletcher stopped making kinetic art in the late 1970s and switched to a more traditional sculptor's palette, bronze and steel. Although the materials and the scale radically changed, he's remained committed to geometric abstraction, drawing inspiration from the circle and the square, letters and numbers. I wanted to arrange these geometrical objects in such a way that their relationship was something like music. of the rope to it and listen to that. That's all? That's all you do and then just stretch it. These wind harps were both about oh um, 10 to 15 meters long. And what kind of material? I used very thick nylon cord. Oh yeah. So you take a piece of pizzo, uh-huh. you make a hole in the middle. Right. The rope goes through the hole, mm -hmm. just tie it, mm -hmm. stretch it, and you're in business. And that's it. Um. Wow. Get a little Just a piece of uh, nylon rope, huh? Mm hmm. Yeah, I'm not technical at all, but this sound is so beautiful, I almost get started <laughs> making them. So great. Do you know how to solder? Well, you know how to glue, yeah, huh? it's not that, that difficult to solder. Mm. And glue is even more easy. You always have to solder one piece and glue another piece, I guess, huh? It's always two. Hmm. Yeah, I guess I have to listen to this tape again to really do it. Well, you know, it's also very easy to make a whole uh, batch of different kinds of, of, I guess, musical instruments. This one is made out of one disc and five pieces of harpsichord wire. Five pieces of what? Harpsichord wire. Oh, I see. Very thin harpsichord wire, cut to different lengths, and I simply solder the harpsichord wire, again that magic word solder, solder the harpsichord wire to the back of the disc. You don't put it on the front, you put it on the back. And now when you pluck it, which is what I'm doing now in this piece, it makes this wonderful big sound. So they're stretched. They aren't actually stretched, no. They're just cut to different lengths. They're just hanging down. Just fairly fairly Thief. short, maybe about two to four centimeters oh, long. Oh yeah, very short. Mm -hmm. Very stiff. Mm -hmm. You pluck them like an African instrument. Except now I'm not plucking them. 
I now took a soda straw. So I guess righteous, is that the word? A what? Righteous. Oh, righteous. Yeah. It's ring righteous. Oh, yeah, it's limonada righteous. Yeah. And I'm now blowing through it, just directing the airflow right at one of the strings. Mmm. Que bella. Yeah. Sound, you hear that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I simply take the wire on the end of this instrument, uh, I mean, this wire, which is now maybe about two meters long, and I spin it around my head. I'm just spinning it rapidly around my head. And what that does is now it makes all the, all the harpsichord wires at once get yeah. to be vibrated. notes and a chord. I wanted to vary the sizes to pick up the crescendo. And, and I tried to get the notes all in, in some harmony. If you look at my work, it is what you see there. There's no deep meaning, but hopefully it will give you a sense of pleasure. At 77, Fletcher comes to the studio every day, still as productive as ever. In a few weeks, he'll be awarded the International Sculpture Center's Lifetime Achievement Award. One has to have a good working habit. So I just go to work, and many days there's nothing happens. Many days I destroy work, whatever. I believe that every sincere working artist has a magic man that... When you get all your stuff together and you're, everything is working, this, this magic man is going to lay one on you. He's going, to, he's going to help you get this thing worked out. But if you aren't in the studio and he comes by, well, you've missed him. Um, Sorry, legibility, legibility. Maybe cool, whatever you're saying, but I can't make it out. And if I can't make it out, nobody can make it out. Legibility. <laughs> you know, if we put it here, we, we've got to get it. We've got to get it braced. That's that's too much. Most of Fletcher's work starts small. He constructs maquettes okay. or models, working quickly and intuitively. This is where most of the creativity takes place. Once a model is done, and if Fletcher likes it, the large-scale sculpture will be almost an exact replica. Other than the poet and the artist, I don't know of anybody else that has total control on the end, the end uh, effort. I mean, the artist is the creator, the worker, the judge, or the destroyer. More, you have all the control, and control is very important to me. You're listening to Over the Edge, featuring receptacle programming. This is not an archive show. This is art on the radio. And I used to date this artist, and she said that the typical art thing was an artist has an idea, and four other artists in the world have the same idea. It's whoever capitalizes on it first, I guess. In my art. As long as you use that to act 
Where is the freedom of action you are talking about? Let's just leave this out with this. Do you have a freedom of action? No. And I'll see how, how I feel about it in a day or two. So, to be able to act independently, you are putting into that tremendous amount of energy. See, the goals which we have placed before ourselves are false. And if we've got to change it, we've got to change it. To achieve those goals, you are putting in tremendous amount of energy. If you are lucky and if that energy is released, what is it that you can't do? Although he found success as a sculptor, Fletcher still has a painting studio and picks up his brushes now and again. Next to the easel and paints are Fletcher's model trains and airplanes. I just happen to like the trains, the way they look and, and the memories of, of them. Like many artists, Fletcher is deeply influenced by his childhood and has created drawings and paintings inspired by trains and engines. I probably never grew up and my view about art is it's, it's, um, it's not an intellectual process. I, I've been on panels and discussed it. I do not believe that any art intellectual process it has to be a lot of fear it has to be something that you gain nothing out of in a material way but it's um, I don't want to say spiritual but it's just intoxicated and that's the best explanation I have Survive in this world very sanely and intelligently. Tremendous amount of energy is available for us to solve these problems. Since we are using tremendous amount of energy to achieve those goals set before us by our culture, our society, we don't have the energy to deal with the problems. KPFA, Berkeley, KPFB, Berkeley, KFCF, and Fresno.
my work each day. I walk back through people, but I don't notice them. I'm not in a dream or anything of that sort. On the contrary, I'm quite wide awake to the world around me, but not to the people. There must be something in them to notice. To pay attention to something of interest in them. In fact, I know there is. I'm certain of it, but I pass through them, noticing nothing. It is only later in my room that I remember. Yes, I remember, but I'm never sure that what. Yesterday, or of a long time ago. And then, often, it is only half things I remember. Half things beginning. I'd ever been married. This time I told her I had. Yes, I told her I had. Certainly, I can remember the wedding. Right now, this is where I, I would say that I'm done with this. Um, once we start working some of the other components, and I can finish off okay. all of the holes to pull it together. Okay. Okay. Okay, guy. It's my turn to paint the puppy. I'm so excited. The whole canvas is painted in great sweeping swaths of colorful paint: yellows, orange reds, greens. The bold colors from a child's paint box mingle with thick, dominant globs of gray and white, smudged on the canvas with apparent abandon. The paint has been applied and scraped away several times. In places, it has run and has dried in long trickles down the canvas. The figure, roughly outlined in black, merges with this hodgepodge of color. Her bold black eyes stare directly at the viewer. Two dots for nostrils. An almost lipless mouth with long, bare teeth and a skull-like head. There is no indication of hair. Large, rounded, bulging breasts. Suggests she's wearing a skin-tight white top or bra, with maybe a pink strap visible at the figure's right shoulder, on the left side of the painting. Her hands rest on her skirt, which is composed of rough horizontal brush strokes of yellow, orange, and blue. Salmon pink ankles emerge, with a suggestion of bluish green strappy shoes. She seems to be sitting perched on a green step. Or footstool. You're tuned to All Art Radio.
dedication to Scary Mary from Campbell. I'd like to request Ozzy Osbourne's Crazy Train.
be on a telephone, you will never in a trillion years experience the film. Run, Jenny! assemblage of battered, grimy objects suggests the trash left at the side of the road. A large, nearly square board is mounted flat on the wall about two feet from the floor. The top third of the board has been covered in a black tarpaulin. This tarp is not stuck flat. The area towards the right, particularly, is sagging and creased. The lower two-thirds of the board are covered in a flattened, dirty, yellowish-white cloth. Part of a man's button-down cocky shirt has been stuck flat to the wooden surface, filling the bottom left-hand corner. The shirt is heavily stained with smudges of grayish paint. And, in the center, a flap hangs down, loose and ragged. Many objects have been attached to this rough surface, and the most significant are described here. In the top center, on the black tarp, the artist has attached a chipped and rusted white circular object about 20 inches in diameter. In its center is what appears to be a small tin can. Below, to the left, is a rectangular, rusted, brown Connecticut license plate with its number XB973, barely legible. Hanging down off the lower left corner of the license plate is a small tin can with a blue light bulb inside. The light bulb is illuminated 
and is wired to an electrical cord which comes out from behind the bottom left edge and runs to an outlet visible beneath the artwork. There are two other very prominent features to the work. In the right side of the composition, a wooden plank with black and white diagonal stripes appearing as if from a wooden street barrier is attached vertically against the board. It runs down to the floor below this board and, on its way, it pierces the top of the tread of a black rubber automobile tire. The resulting shape is like an upside-down lollipop on a stick. The tire rests on the floor, propped so its circular shape faces the viewer. The top of the tire only slightly overlaps the bottom of the board. become unbearable and so we are looking here, there, everywhere to find out answers for our questions. And that situation is being exploited by every do-gooder in this world, every enlightened man, every guru in the marketplace is selling us the shoddy piece of goods. They just don't work. They just don't solve our problems. So we live with the hope of solving these problems. One day we live in hope and die in hope. That in short is the story of us all. I am not interested in taking you away from anybody. You can live with your gurus, you can do what you like. I am not here to save you from anything. If you don't want, who else in the world can help you? One thing I can say, look, you can walk. If you fall, you will be able to rise on your own. Throw away all these crutches. You don't need them. But don't replace them with these mechanized, you see, you know, computerized uh, uh, things that these people are providing us with. The old ones are better than these computerized and mechanized things. They are fancy stuff. That's all. If it is a question of using them, use the old ones. <laughs> You don't need them. That's all that I can say. If you fall, you will have the strength to rise and walk on your own. Don't ask me. Help me to walk. Help me to stand. No. A car crash as I cross the stream. No meat. No mind. No consciousness. No one to be free of darkness, or for the light to find in the universe's white eagle wings, for I have been with you. With no regret, we will leave as if we were never here. It all goes by so fast. When's your next five-hour show, anyway? I, 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 I believe January is it. Oh, yep. very well. Yep. I want more. Well, you'll be back next week, won't you? Go to our website, negativeland.com. All old shows are archived there, and, uh, geez, you can hear a lot of them for nothing, I, I guess. Oh, is the, uh, can you buy things there now? You had problems earlier. Well, no, that is the problem. I think we're giving away the entire archives at the moment of Over the Edge, which goes all the, back, all the way back to the 80s. I'm sure there's some you haven't heard. And, and yes, the old ones were for sale, but we're screwed up at our website, completely screwed up. And, and so we're just making them free for the moment while we're working on it. Really? Well, I'll have to go take a look there. Uh, I do. Although, if you want to ever put together that package we talked about of all the How Radio Was Done shows, that would be another thing to add to your uh, yep. items. Yep, yep. Projects, projects, projects. Oh, I know. Well, I'm satisfied for the moment with your uh, real-time ongoing efforts and... Uh, 
I sometimes wonder who will die first, me or the show. Mm -hmm. Well, negativeland.com. Negativeland. One word, no E in the middle, dot com. Yes, and it is not negative, by the way. It is very positive and uh, enriching for the culture. Just like me, Happy Hazard. It is All Out Radio. It's KPFA. Going to three tonight, which is about, I don't know, 12 minutes away. Let's see what happens. Holding it precious and perfect in the ongoing nothingness. Not even knowing there's nothing to forget. Even tired arm muscles after swimming. This is our perfection. Silence the eyes. Become the senses. Drive drool from the fresh repugnance, thou whole, thou feeling creature. Live not for others, but affect thyself from thy enhanced interior, believing what thou carry. Thy trillionic multitude of gra, whooshes, and silences. You are heavier and dimmer than you knew, and more solid and full of pleasure. Gra, 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 gra. Gaze at the crystal. Gra, gra. expressionist painting but it does not at first glance convey the expressive handling of paint that you might associate with Jackson Pollock or Willem de Kooning this is a great field of monochromatic red a deep saturated red from top to bottom from side to side it's over a hundred square feet of red it's not the glossy red of a sports car it's not as bright as that it's not the dark, liquid red of blood, either. Instead, it has a matte finish and perhaps the shade of a field of poppies. It's not just that it is impossible to put a name on a particular shade of color. It's also that such a large, flat expanse of red can seem to change even as you look at it. This expanse of color is interrupted by five thin vertical stripes. Newman called these zips. Each is an inch or two wide, but no two are exactly alike. Starting at the left, the first, about 18 inches from the edge, is a lighter, orangier red than the dominant color of the painting. This zip is imperfect and uneven, particularly along its edges. The next, another four feet over, is bright white and seems to boldly divide the painting into two unequal parts. The zip to its right is another seven feet over, 
and its color is much softer and darker. It might be described as maroon. Between those two vertical stripes is an almost perfect square of red in the center of this enormous canvas. The next vertical stripe is about two feet from the right edge of the painting. It's the same orange color as the one on the far left and just slightly wider. The final zip is tan and almost looks like raw canvas, but closer examination shows that it too is paint. About two inches wide and about an inch from the right edge of the unframed, stretched canvas. In the lower left corner is the artist's signature and the year, 1950. Just below it, the artist apparently went back in the following year and added a plus sign, the number 51, and his initials, B.N. We know that in that year, Newman added the zip closest to the right-hand edge of the painting. of this first. So I'm going to lay down all my darks and those darks represent what I see within the darkest values of my photograph here. Okay? Now I have a half inch, it's a Robert Simmons white sable brush and I've loaded it up and this is a mixture of perm permanent alizarin crimson, a hint of Windsor green blue shade and some of the permanent rose.
about wraps us up and frames us perfectly. This is All Art Radio. I'm Happy Hazard. I'll be back next week. And this is KPFA and KPFB in Berkeley, KFCF in Fresno, KPFA.org online. Please visit. And Puzzling Evidence and his whole show is up next. Disconcerting presence from Nan Ray.